I wanted to circle back, even though Mina didn't want to do left-wing Marxist Lebetard show has racist Jamel Hill on their show, uh, because I missed out on what I believe had to have been uh, stimulating, interesting conversation in 2024 where race meets sports, and you can dissect on a Monday night at the height of television sports ratings the explosion of women's basketball that has been thundering toward us here for a while culminates with Angel Reese last year behaving in a way that made Caitlin Clark have the revenge story of I will come back stronger, I will build storylines, and at the top of the sport I will have white against black and people got really mad at Jamel for pointing it out as race wars when I want to circle back on what it is that we were talking about which is where people make connection points on things stories beyond what unities really even though some of them are poisonous in the in the modern age Clay, Caitlin Clark uh, the way that Paul Pierce discussed and he got dragged for this and the internet will drag a lot of people here for saying dumb things because they're just arriving at the sport and something needs to be said and you're talking out of your ass because there are people covering this well and very often it's not we the men who just got here because I'm not going to pretend like I can cover this well I've not been following the intricacies of this sport and so I end up missing out on some fun stuff. But like a lot of people, I found my television on Monday night because I wanted to see that. All of that. That seems like a lot of pressure on everybody involved. Mulkey's fighting the Washington Post. Uh, Angel Reese has been spectacular her entire life. And then Jamel dares to point out that this sport has been built on, like basketball has, on the, on the backs of black people and the stardom. And, oh, Caitlin got here and she's getting a lot of coverage and here's the explosion of the sport. But I wanted to circle back on what I was saying before on how sports get built, storylines, where the attachments get made, the commonalities of people. And the differences, because of course this isn't going to be as polite in 2024 as it was in 1981. God almighty magic was nice about that. But black women get it worse in this country than just about anybody. And Angel Reese, whatever it is that she's had to endure, whether you think she brought it on herself or not, because toughen up, Angel Reese, you can't play with the big boys and say you're a wolf. The big girls. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, okay, but what she was under and is under, hell, Caitlin Clark's telling you, the, the weight of the world feels like it's on my shoulders. Because it is. This is what sports brings, and it's what we enjoy covering. So, Jessica, I, how did we cover all of this this week? Because I thought it was fascinating from a lot of different angles, and I don't know... Uh, I, I'm sure we all gathered around to talk about the game, and I'm sure Mean got there and changed all of Kim Mulkey's practices <laughs> and might not be wrong, but needed five minutes of basketball to watch to say I could do all of this better. I mean, well, okay, uh, I can't speak for this show because Nazi. I was at a wedding this weekend, so I was out Monday and then I wasn't on the schedule Tuesday, but I listened to bits and pieces, and I think the thing that is a little bit of a double-edged sword right now with where we're at with women's sports is that you obviously, if you're a fan of women's sports, you want them to be treated the way that they should be treated, which is a, a huge event that is covered on mainstream shows on all the networks. And I think what's frustrating is that you have a lot of people that, like you said, swoop in. And this isn't this isn't about Amin saying he knows better than Kim Mulkey. Or I whatever. didn't say that. Well, I I know that's why this isn't about that. <laughs> oh, I, about I didn't want it to sound it. like it because that's the last thing Dan said. He just said adjust to the adjustments. That's all. I agree. I mean, she she horrible, just horrible by uh, LSU on defense Monday night. But I digress. But I, also, I, I don't know how you guard Caitlin Clark. I mean, that's how do you stop that from it. thirty feet? Okay. Um, right. So this isn't about this isn't about anyone on this show but in general seeing some of the conversations happening on ESPN or Fox or whatever uh it's disheartening because you now see the way uh men's sports is treated a lot of time which is like really ignorant just stupid hot takes but now it's happening to women's players and i think there's an element of racism and definitely sexism that uh a lot of these shows do not know how to talk about and do not know how to handle. And I think you, you're seeing that a lot with especially the conversation about Angel Reese um, and the reaction to her press conference on Monday night. And, and it's disappointing because it's like, great, we're finally talking about women's sports, but like, are we doing it very well? I'm not sure. And I think this is a really like awesome time to elevate 
the voices that have been talking and covering women's sports for decades, for years, the people that have been there along the way. But instead of that, you're just getting the same men who have been talking about, like, who haven't been watching the sport, talking about women's sports the way they talk about stuff that they do actually watch, and it's not a very good job. Wow, that's interesting, because what you're saying is basically what Angel Reese is getting at the end is I've not been paying attention for the last four years of what you're doing. I paid attention some last year, and now, hey, you talked a lot, you lose, loser. You lose, loser. You're, you right. talked a lot, now you can't handle it, loser. I would argue that's how they talk about men's sports, too. They do that poorly as well. I yes, agree. and we've been doing that for 50 years. I agree, I mean. although I will say, like, <laughs> men talking about men's sports – you are less inclined to hear just outright misogyny and sexism, yeah. whereas in women's sports, like that's that is the hurdle that women's sports have faced in being talked about for the last hundred years at least. So it, it is like there's a little bit of a difference there, but I do agree. I mean, I think that like in general, we always complain about how media cover the show is like supposed to be. I mean, my understanding of the Levitard show is that we make fun of those shows, right? Like the show do? is supposed to be the show that makes fun of the like now or never game that they're playing on first take, right? So like, yes, the coverage already can be really bad. It can be bad in a way that isn't overtly like offensive or o overtly sexist and just shitty in general and racist. And I think you're seeing like the lack of being able to like contextualize all of the things that Angel Reese is saying is very apparent. If you've just tuned in or you've just not even tuned in, you just saw the clip on on Twitter or whatever or on Instagram and you have to react to it because now you're on a show. Just and saw the infographic. You just don't. Exactly. You saw the quote. You didn't even listen to her say it. You saw, saw it written out yep. on like the Sports Illustrated Instagram page. If anyone still works there. <laughs> uh, so it's really, really <laughs> frustrating. And again, I get it. It comes with the mainstream effect of the sport being watched by 12 million people I understand that it's just that I think we can do better and I think there have been really 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 smart people that have covered women's basketball and women's soccer and volleyball and softball and all these sports for decades for years sometimes even for free because there aren't a lot of companies that hire women to cover women's sports and their voices are getting drowned out by some stupid that will go viral that is just going to dominate the entire conversation the next day and that stinks uh, and I hope we are not guilty of that. But it's super interesting. It's what it's super interesting what you're saying though, because if you're someone who cares enough to know and have invested in what watching that sport grow has been, it must be deeply insulting to see a whole bunch of people who just got here in the media who you want to handle this with care, who don't have the care about the sport or their own job to be able to talk about this stuff better. I will tell you, Jessica, in our meager defense, that uh, the whole reason that we started the initial uh, March Sadness tournament that we do is because we don't know anything about college basketball, men's or women's. Never have for 20 Speak years. For well, South, we, we South Florida has never got an excuse. Tony Brock, Tony Brock, and if you're, and if you're yeah. wrong on this show, yeah. it's endearing. You're, you're just Stu Gatz. Uh, Stu, it's, Stu Gatz. it's been an elaborate costume wrong. for 20 years. We haven't known how to talk about this tournament for 20 years. Hey, somebody called Dick Vitale and Bruce Pearl. But, you know, if that if that's oh, fair if you want to actually talk about the game and be wrong about the game. But what we're talking about with Angel Reese's comments is something outside of just the game that's played on the court, right? We're talking about the normalization of the abuse of college athletes and especially young women. And I think that that's important context. We're not talking about and how she played women, on Monday night. And black women. Exactly. Bla of course, because black women make up predominantly the sport, especially in the WNBA. And that is something that I don't think should be ignored in the conversation. You cannot separate Angel Reese from the identity she rep represents to the people that watch her play and the people that talk about her on television. You, it's, it's absurd to even pretend like you can do that. And so I think that's where, you know, yeah, you can say like these shows don't, they don't cover men well either. And I agree with that. But I think there's a little bit of, uh, a lot of context missing if you're trying to just swoop in and have a hot take about something that is a little serious that is pretty hard to talk about i had the wolf pack in the final four back in january i mean which wolf pack both you did not have both i had Look three it of up. the four <laughs> women's final four teams in my bracket the only one i didn't have was the wolf pack i had yukon iowa nobody likes South that Carolina, person Carolina, nobody <laughs> like nobody <laughs> likes that person don't worry mike ryan would have had it because they beat um mike ryan definitely had nc state going far because they beat um put it on the poll juju do you want to hear about anybody's bracket who had three out of four 
I'm scared to look at my texts here from David Sampson. I don't know what's gotten back to him about what has come out on the air, but I think that uh, Amin, mm-hmm. uh, Amin has escalated things. Oh, wow. Okay. I've just got a middle finger here from the Rich Eisen set. I've got a, a, a mm. middle finger. He's already desecrating the set of Rich Eisen. Uh, See? Uh, that's a middle, that is a middle finger symbolically to me, to us, correct? I think it's pretty clear. Yep. You don't want to be the last one to know you're in a war, Dano. Bad place to be. Mm-hmm. Well, but I learned, didn't I learn when you guys learned, when he told all of us on social media that he was filling in for Rich Eisen? Did, well, I we, didn't know that we, and no, before you didn't, today. You didn't learn that it was a war, though. You learned that it was a betrayal. We all went to war. You were asking, what war? What war are you talking about? You acted all surprised that we were getting all our well, equipment ready. Uh, but only because if he wants to be over there, that is a good world for him as well. Like that's well, if it, if him and Rich Eisen want to pal around. It's Rich Eisen's world, though. He's just filling in. I mean, right, he can have that if he wants. He just wants to fill in for a guy because his name's Rich. Hmm. <laughs> Of course, you'd like that. Get out for that yeah, laugh. Just exactly. for laughing. Just get yes. out for the you laugh. Rich I was gonna say. I was gonna say he loves Poor us no, more get, like Rich no, lies. I have a production get meeting out. and I have a laptop here. Get out. Editing. Can I get out? I have to out. leave. Do I, it under the desk. Get out. I don't yeah. care what. Yes. I'm gonna go under the elevator. Under the desk. I like okay. that. I'm. So, yeah. I am going to uh, have to start kicking <laughs> him out before he gets to the jokes. Lower. I can see your head. I mean, he's getting paid for this. Don't uh, take it personally. It's nothing personal. Uh, can I uh, see. just go back for for one moment uh, to what we were saying? I will again say to you, if Doncic and Jokic were white Americans, because Caitlin Clark, Clark right now is the uh, the most famous American basketball player that we have, the most relevant, the most important, uh, it matters that you can make the connection points wherever it is that you make them and white people represent still the majority of your customer base. So when I say that it's good for the sport to have white on black on Monday night and people tuning around the television, but of course the discourse around white against black in 2024 is not going to be the way that it was around Magic and Bird for all of us to consume. Like, it's not going to be in our face, so it's going to be ugly and unpleasant when the race stuff comes to sports in 2024. Dan, I would say, okay, now go look at boxing and UFC because that shit happens all the time. That's right. They traffic in it, but they're also the dirtier sports. Sure, but I'm just saying it's They're the sports that care nothing about anything other than money and whether or not the fight sells, and it's at its most primitive form and its most grotesque and greedy form, but everything is allowed there. And it works. Everything's allowed there. Marketing-wise, it works, and so I don't think it's beneath us to accept that there is an element of this, which is what Jamel is saying, is the element of this that's elevated by the racial dynamics. Also, to the point you were saying about if Jokic and uh, Luka were, were white Americans, how would they be perceived? I remember two decades ago almost, you guys remember Jason Capono, great three-point shooter of from course, Miami Heat? Of course, right? yes. Jason Capono had one of my favorite quotes in NBA history. He said, if my last name were Caponovich, I would have gone top five. And he had a point because at the time – there was an, and I think it still exists, an infatuation with that of someone coming from over there. They've got training techniques that we've never heard of, whatever. So you talk about Jason Capono, 6'8", great three-point shooter. If he were Jason Caponovich from Slovenia, <laughs> the draft would have gone crazy over him. But he's a white guy who played four years at UCLA. It's like, all right, whatever, we'll give him a shot. Have you ever heard uh, our one of our original songs, My Capono, uh, sung about <laughs> Jason Capono? I was offended when you asked if we heard of Jason Capono. I, I mean, you know, I don't know. Sometimes people are like, who? He's a top five JK in Heat history. <laughs> Go ahead and play it, Chris. <laughs> Crescendo. Ooh, my little sweaty one, sweaty one. When will Pat give you more time, Capono? Ooh, you make your free throws in, free throws in. Gunning from the three-point line, Capono never gets a shot. Kind of hard when Antoine Walker's in your way, bombs away with that alien head of his. Woo! My, 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 Capono. 
Capono, ooh, you got such pretty hair, pretty hair. <laughs> Simeon wishes his fro looked so nice. Capono, you are such a mystery, like Posey, wearing socks up to his knees. Oh, Capono never gets a shot. Rides the bench next to Michael Doliak, even though he's got a sweeter stroke than Dan with black gloves. Woo! <laughs> my, 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 Capono. My, 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 Capono. So good. Such enthusiasm. I like how the instrumental was played like off his phone into the old school. <laughs> like just I'm gonna hit play over here and then I'm hold my phone up. That was uncommonly bad. What? That was amazing. <laughs> it's a classic. Like Sixteen seed maybe this year. That means that makes Taylor's song seem highly produced. <laughs> that uh, that made my face hurt from the amount of shame that just swept over me. Uh, but we ended the last segment, I mean, uh-huh. talking about the general mediocrity of coverage. And Godfrey uh, talked some about this in comedy with Shannon Sharp here recently mm-hmm. on how, how, just how acceptable mediocrity is in some professions. Mm-hmm. And sports media is absolutely one of them. Thank God. <laughs> yeah, so, so Godfrey is a brilliant stand-up comedian, uh, He's been in a bunch of movies and stuff, but really he's a great stand-up comic. And he went on Shannon Sharp, and th- the conversation got to T.I. Like, how do you feel about, like, celebrities parachuting in and deciding, oh, I'll, I'll try stand-up. And so T.I., the rapper, did stand-up for a little bit. And Godfrey said, we can't be mad because us as an industry, as a culture, we've tolerated mediocrity for so long. Why wouldn't someone think they could just drop in and do this? And that's kind of, when he said that, I know he's talking about stand-up comedy as someone who's very proud of stand-up comedy, but my mind instantly went to what we do for a living, which is talking to microphones, podcasting in general, but specifically sports podcasts. And the reason why you see a proliferation over the last year plus, two years, or whatever, oh, everyone's got a podcast. and I think that, you know, LSU should do this or whatever. It's because they are mimicking the mediocrity that the gate-kept industry has allowed to proliferate out there. Every time we just have people yelling at each other on a set with just the most barbershop of opinions, and we allow that to be called sports television, it encourages everyone to say, well, I can do that. But that's what's happened. Yes. The, the industry in general has been so cheapened by content that isn't very impressive, that is lowest common denominator, that doesn't require, even when the sports you're covering or football. Like we work se- hard. We've seen in the last 10 or 15 years, people have actually gotten smarter on all of this stuff. But what Jessica is speaking to that makes an appearance all the time to me is when the fan base knows that the analysts they're listening to don't know as much as they should, when you smell that – on somebody like that's a real turnoff for you on how it is that things get consumed in this country if you care about them and somebody who's being paid to care about them can't treat it with the same care you have so there's a collision going on right there's a collision because on the one hand we live in an era that unlike any other if i wanted expert opinion analysis about whatever it is it exists like jessica said some of these people are doing it for free but it exists But the problem is some of these people are doing it for free. So if I want to consume the thing that is still most easily accessible and the thing that where the people doing it are best compensated, I almost have to accept that I'm going to watch something that is mediocre. It's how do I elevate the good stuff, but how do I draw in the masses that the mediocrity seems to attract? Let me ask you guys a question before we update March Madness and the weekend observations. March Sadness. Uh, March Sadness. It's Thursday. Yes. Um, <laughs> would the group like for me to let Amin go to dismiss him early today? Have we had enough of Ooh, Amin? Early dismissal. Just Ooh. like yeah, like school, like right? You. Yes. Uh, I just yeah. got used to my step Dan. All right. Ooh. I'm going to kick him out. I'm, yeah, you get I'm, out of here. I'm we'll play catch tomorrow, buddy. I'm threat- <laughs> Thanks, man. threatened by his mediocrity. Uh, thank you, stepdad. Wait, that means he's never going to come. Appreciate you yeah. for being around here, stepdad, for the last couple of days. Held it down. Which were you? Were you the stepdad or were you the substitute teacher? I was the Dan that stepped up. <laughs> and now he's stepping out. Let's do weekend observations, please. Huh. 
It is time for Stu Gats to share his game notes. How did you guys not do this? No one in the media will tell you what happened better than my boy Stu. just got here. It's Thursday. I got here yesterday. It's like three weeks worth. Anyway, weekend observations brought to you by Miller Lite. Great taste. 96 calories available for delivery. Dan, with no football for months and the women's college basketball season coming to an end, it's this sport's time to shine. Ducks on the pond, dingers, a little chin music, a can of corn, a hot dog and a beer. There's a super team in L.A., and a team that might not win 50 games right here in our backyard. For the life of me, I couldn't tell you who won the World Series a year ago. But who cares? Because Dan, just like that, make no mistake about it, baseball is back. We will not have true equality in sports media when a woman can say she has no idea for months who won the World Series last year. Hmm. It's the Rangers. What? Really? It's a level of mediocrity that... Uh, right. that just wrapped up the women's college basketball season. We've yeah. told you a couple of different times in the last six months who won the World Series. Uh, and Rangers, you can't huh? remember it. Rangers. Well, congrats. Pretty forgettable World Series champion, I'd say. When it's the Rangers. Draft Krings. Word series. After fu- Clark. What? Ooh, you got it's me hap- there. Dan it's happened twice today. In your defense, it's happened to and everybody. I, and I get scared of it because it sounds like another word. Like, I get, I wince around it because I feel like I'm saying a bad word when I call her Kark. Oh, <laughs> call her CC. Thank you. Stark. I should call her Stark. <laughs> After five games, the Mets feel like they are mathematically out of it. Is that possible? Ahead of the Marlins. <laughs> Dan, can you smell it yet? Smell what? Augusta. No. <laughs> Tiger says no sex. He's not going to have any sex to save his legs for Augusta. Really? Is it worth it? He's got five jackets. Have some sex. Oh, he said plenty of sex, I guess. Coach Cal, losing to Oakland and blaming it on having a team full of freshmen, something he controls. Coach Cow, the Stugats, is strong in you. Somehow, a Mets game getting rained out makes me happy. It's not a loss. The Mets had one of the smallest opening day ticket prices in the sport. I was stunned to see that. It was yeah. it was Marlins, A's, and then Mets. And then and then White Sox. And the White Sox have won like 25 games since the All-Star break of last year. It's the rare rebuilding year where they're spending $300 million. That's crazy. <laughs> Coach Cal, hot seat. Tried to tell you, Dano. Listening, not a strong suit. Dan, you know what the L and Levitard stands for? Not listening. Very good. Clemson, New Mexico. That one was over in less time than it took Richard's dad to have sex on the floor in an Italian restaurant with someone who wasn't his wife. The Lobos. Craig Kimbrell is an Oriole. Caitlin Clark, do it in the Final Four. Oh, come on. What? Why can't I say that? You can say it. You can say it. Kark. Went to a bar and grill in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, named Four Corners. Great name. Things you do when you are driving around the South on a gummy in the passenger seat of a car. Top five sports terms that would be a great name for a sports bar and grill. This is a good list. (laughs) This is a good list. (laughs) Number five, power play bar and grill. (laughs) Number four, buzzer beaters bar and grill. Number three. Tony loves the show you do. PK's Bar and Grill. Power plays. Let's go. Go pee pee. Yep. (laughs) Tony, I'll meet you at Power (laughs) Plays. No, let's go pee pee. (laughs) Number two. Winner go home. Bar and Grill. A little wordy. Yep. Number one. The Woodshed Bar and Grill. 
that a sports term? The woodshed? I Taking mean, them to the woodshed. Come on. More of a tavern. Yeah. Maybe. Is that a woodshed? A woodshed? My is list. A, is it a sports term? Yeah. What about the sports bra? Ooh. Women's sports bar in Portland. Ooh. Here come the Warriors. <laughs> Auburn. Losing to Yale. Kentucky. Losing to Oakland. SEC. Frauds. SEC. It just means more. More losses to mid-majors, apparently. Marcus Mariota will wear the number zero for the Commanders. The rare number that connotes how many snaps the fan base wants you to take. Dan, you know what the D in Dusty May stands for? I do not. It stands for did he already have one foot out the door? No need to discuss. Just stash it away. Something to ponder. Dusty May getting nearly $19 million from Michigan for one final four run. The M in May... Stands for milking that one final four for all it's worth. When I was gone, no one mentioned on this show about it. Not one mentioned on this show about an Astros pitcher throwing a no hitter. Remember when a no hitter meant something? <laughs> what a lead sports center. Put it on the pole, We would have broken the coverage. Put it on the poll, please, Juju at Levitard Show. Remember when a no hitter meant something? <laughs> yes or no? If you ever pick Arizona... To win it all in your bracket, you have nobody fool. to blame but yourself. Well done, fool. 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 Yep. <laughs> You're a fool. Every time they, they asked me, they filled out one of those brackets for me, and they asked me what my opinion was, and I just said, Arizona won't win anything. <laughs> That's it. You learned. That's it. <laughs> Sean Miller. I know they moved on no, from it's him. It's not but Sean Miller. It goes to Sean Miller. It's, it doesn't matter who it is. It's not Sean Miller. It's not Lou Olson. I, tell you that. I, I do love the Kevin Keats story with North Carolina State, though. That guy was going to be fired. And now he is thread. No, but he was going to be fired. Now he's kicked off all sorts of contract incentives. He's in the Final Four, and it's like, what are you doing? Like 13 straight games. <laughs> Tried to tell you. So good. You did, actually. Every time San Diego State has made it to the Sweet 16, UConn has won the national championship. You know what that means? I don't, but it seems to bode well for UConn. Has this show fallen in love with DJ Burns yet? Of course. I mean, it's just the greatest. Mm. We when did 10 can... minutes on Tony Brackett's just on DJ Burns. Uh, it's uh, when Tony discovering the heavy set baller. And you do uh, that to Duke, too. I mean. I know, it's just so great. Mm-hmm. The only double-digit seed to make it to the Final Four is the ACC champions, North Carolina State, the Wolfpack. Another thing I tried to tell you back in January, you know what the Ellen Levitard stands for? Not listening. <laughs> you are on your yeah, game, man. Yeah, you did try to tell me with one of those, <laughs> look out for the Wolfpack. Yeah. You did. I did. You were right. Yeah, Mike agreed with me. Yes, yes. Not Mike. certain he was listening, but he agreed. No, Mike agreed with it because right. they beat his beloved Hurricanes who quit on the end of the season and mm. didn't win a game after right. the Super Bowl. USA Men's Soccer won something called the Nations League. Enough of the leagues, enough of the cups, enough of the tournaments. Just win the big one, the World Cup. That's a enough. cup. That's a cup. Uh, enough of them. If it's not the World Cup, it's not a cup. Put that on the poll. Unless it's Stanley Cup. That's a cup. <laughs> Jim Nance, take a tournament off. See you in Augusta. I don't need to see him in the stands. I don't. Every time I bet against the Royals, you can guarantee Bobby Witt Jr. is going three for four. Bobby Witt Jr., top five people in sports that connote smarts. OLI, Patrick Sharp. Donta Bright. Thank you. Number five. <laughs> Thank you. Marcus Smart. Smart. Number four. Bobby Witt Jr. Number three. Allen Iverson. AI. Number two. <laughs> Bobby the Brain Heenan. The answer would have also worked there, not just AI. The answer would True. have, both of them would have worked. In fact, that should be number one, given that he's got two of them. It's my list. Number one, Emmanuel Quickly. IQ. Pick up things quickly, Dano, come on. I hope his name is spelled with an E. <laughs> it might. <laughs> it might be.
I hope no, you're so. Good. You're good. I'd, I'd, like, it's I'd, I'd like it to be. Thank you. We can change it. <laughs> I did. He wasn't sure. He got shaky there. I did. About six seconds of panicking. <laughs> he played for the Knicks, and so you'd think that Stugatz would know. Long Beach State ADs taking credit for the team making the tournament because he fired the coach for motivation. Sir, the Stugatz is very strong in you. So good. Amazing. Texans, Stephon Diggs. You know what the Texans are doing, Dan? All in. You got it. The Texans, the rare team with three number one wide receivers. Juan Soto just looks better as a Yankee. Dallas Stars, watch out. Purdue, do it on the third weekend. Duquesne and James Madison lost in the second round. Couple of Dukes getting eliminated. Tom Izzo saying, quote, I'm going to get back to a deeper run in the tournament, even if it kills me. Goosebumps. The guy at work who says he had that in the other bracket. Go straight to hell. Speaking yeah, of hell, that guy. Art Bryles. Yeah, nobody Dan, likes, nobody likes that guy. those are the weekend observations. All right, Chris Cody, you seem to lack a certain confidence in our March Sadness Tournament uh, updates. Uh, you feel like you're going to handle this efficiently and well. You've seemed scared of this all show today. Dan, I appreciate that setup. It is very much appreciated. Um, Thank you. We're very excited about the tournament, actually. We've had a lot of fun. We are into our Elite Eight. We just finished our Sweet 16. We have eight teams left. We're going to do two. We're just going to update the winners. Thank you, Jessica. Th Jessica, excellent feigned enthusiasm for your teammates, supporting Chris Cody at Let's the go, end. Chris. <laughs> Yeah, March Sadness. Let's go. I feel, like, Brody. I feel like everyone's excited about this except Dan. March Sadness is presented by Get Your Guide. Discover over 100,000 unforgettable travel experiences in the U.S. and around the world at getyourguide.com. Let's see who from the Greg Cody How's matchup. How's the voting going? How, well, I'm because, about to let you know. Well, well because I, I'll tell you something. Uh, the Billy the Anarchist, one of the reasons I wanted to come in and celebrate with him, the Marlins 0-7 start, <laughs> is because uh, Billy the Anarchist, I heard him. He was giggling in a corner recently because we have voting uh, that we're doing interactive on this tournament, but we weren't showing anybody what the voting was revealing. And so he thought that was funny to not inform our audience that way. I mean, we told him did. to go to social media. I don't know what else we can do other than say, go to our social media to vote. It's mainly on Instagram, but it's all over the place. Let's do the Greg Cody region. Let's see who got to the Elite Eight. Huh. We had the one seed, Lovely Cruise from Vegas. This was Vegas. the best region, correct? This was uniformly described as the best region? In the Sweet 16, we had Lovely Cruise versus I'm Greg, bitch. Who do you guys think won? Votes around the room here. What do we think? Ooh. Greg, bitch, Greg. or just our emotional Greg. moment? I'm Greg, Greg. bitch. I'm Greg, bitch. All right, video. Show them who won. I'm Greg, bitch. All right. So <laughs> Greg, bitch, moves on. Our heartfelt moment, lovely cruise, gone from the tournament. Wow. One seed, wow. eliminated. <laughs> In the 4-5 matchup, we have oh, wow. birth of and you know it and nice hat. Who do we think won of this? <laughs> oh, it's not nice no, and you know, it's it's right. and you know what? It's going to be nostalgic and popularity, but it's not going to deserve it. Can I, can I make a confession? I hate the nice hat clip what? because I don't know Jonathan Zaslow at all, oh. but he really bothers me when I hear him <laughs> talk in this clip. Let's see who won video. Can't trade Marino. Uh, ah, nice oh, hat. Nice hat, Zaslow. It's what he's most known for. It's not like I'm holding on to it. Do you remember what Scott Mitchell looked like in that next game after Marino They got were hurt? nine and two. They were oh, nine and two. Amazing. And then they lost their last five and missed the playoffs. Nice they hat. went nine and two. But it's, it's Marino. Nice and then hat. the next time we saw Marino, after Greg Cody yeah, traded him, he threw for five touchdowns. Nice and he was hat. Dan the Man on the I cover of Sports Illustrated. Mm. You can't trade Marino. Nice hat. <laughs> I can't believe that beat and you know it. If you're that sunburned, you can't be wearing a white hat. Backwards. Makes it a lot worse. <laughs> All right, next matchup. Three seed, I don't miss my wife versus paranoid <laughs> Greg refusing to do it back in my day. What do we think won here? Wow. The paranoid wow. Greg is great. It's got to be wife. It's got to be wife. I, but yes. paranoid Greg was funnier. It's just so long. All right, let's see who won video. Are there any none. good Greg Cody stories not told by Greg Cody about Greg Cody? <laughs> yeah. Don't miss my wife. Oh, I have okay. a couple, but I'm not telling them. <laughs> Baby! That's yeah, my that guy. kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> We don't. No, I'm quiet. You know what? I hadn't left the hotel until last night. I'm a very quiet man. I'm yes. A, you know, I'm a married man. I don't cheat on my wife, despite that <laughs> gratuitous line in back in that my you day. Wrote. 
that I wrote. <laughs> um, you know, I wish you were here, my wife. I really miss her. All right, so that one, that one. <laughs> That's just a classic. Final matchup in the Greg Cody region. We have Magnum Condom Revelation Ooh. versus him annoyed with us during the Dolphins broadcast. What do we think here? Oh, Magnum Con. Magnum Con is a great one yeah. too. Yeah, man. But, th- but him annoyed with us was better. But we're gonna go lowest common denominator. Let's Anything see video. With Greg Cody in a condom. Wake him up. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yep. Oh, he doesn't want to be annoyed. Greg anymore. Cody. Now it's getting tense yes. because he didn't need that as a focus. result. He needs something that happens. <laughs> you can, yeah, you can says, see him mother says, effing. No, he says, <laughs> can we bother? Yes. Are we bothering you right now? Turn on your microphone, Greg. My microphone's on. Okay. <laughs> when my microphone is on, you oh, guys have to come to me. I mean, don't tell me to turn my. Ah, uh, classic Greg Cody there, just getting annoyed. Just and that. So those are your final four matchups in the Greg Cody region. As we move on here to the club sounds. Effortlessly. I mean, we're, I'm, I'm <laughs> spending a lot of plates here. We're going quick. Yeah. Yeah. We've got a little okay. time left. So you are going, you're doing it very gracefully. No one knows you're filibustering. We're just expecting you to spin the next plate without it crashing to the floor. In the club region, Jessica's grandma saying, holy crap, Jessica, versus Lucy saying, I get bitches left and right. Who do you guys got? Ooh. Jessica's grandma. Lucy might pull Jess's up grandma. I was getting bitches left and oh, right. Wow. <laughs> A stunner. Wow, so that could have been the final. Grandma. Oh my God, what a great game! That's like LSU and uh, Iowa. Right so we are into our the final. into our elite eight. Go to our socials, vote. That's where you can go, Dan. Our socials, Instagram, vote. Let's see who makes the final four. But we're having fun with the March sadness. Who else? That's it. That's, That's it. it. <laughs> Thank you. Do you Thank think you. giggling Thank in the you. corner is Billy's favorite pastime? Oh yeah. God. God. <laughs> that or asking why I work here. <laughs> He's denied us the ability to make fun of his baseball team that isn't giving anybody for anything except diarrhea runs in the outfield, trying to lure you in with instruments and food. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, coming up next is one of my favorite things that I've done here on the show. It's called Tony Tonight. I go around Miami, and I show you the real Miami. This one, we're going to a very special place, Guy Ocho, with a guy who's selling something uniquely Cuban, Guayabetas. I go with Billy, by the way. He always tags along with me. I hate it. You know what is this for, really? To pick up the... Oh, I just took out my machete. Oh. No. Yes. No, yes. you got it. Con gana. Okay, look, okay. okay. Ra, cha, cha, chi, chi, cha, cha. All right, we're here with Big Papa on Ocho, the original G of Guayaberas. Big Papa, they call me Big Papa. Why is that? because I'm big papa that I want to look. Visual journey into the heart of Miami National Treasure. Did you write that that book? No, I didn't write that book. That book was written about you? Yes. Why? Because of my national treasure. Okay, explain to me why. And because of this right here. This is called a guayabera shirt. Why do they call it guayabera shirt? Because this guava goes in here. You see it? Mm. Guayabera shirt, the guava fruit. So you can put up to four Wayaba fruits in there. That's right. You could put a lot of stuff in here. Back in the late 1800s, they actually made this for a Cuban working farmer. And it's called Guayabera. Look, Guayabera up there. So you actually put the guava fruits here. Now, it was a lady from Andalusia, married this Cuban farmer. She designed the working farmer shirt. And it's called Guayabera. She was so smart, she added two more pockets. What do you think this is for? It could be more guavas, but the actual purpose, look. To put... The right. cigars. Right. And then, look, she had another pocket. This is for your handkerchief, you know, your sweat. Mm-hmm. Why it became a gentleman's shirt? Because we make the girls cry. And uh-huh. guess what we do? We take out and we wipe the tear and, and we say, yeah. I'm sorry. And then, because the girls break our heart, you know what we do? Give them a guayaba. No. <laughs> oh. No. We also take out the handkerchief because she broke my heart. Wow. Now, wow. Wipe your own tears. And then you eat the guayaba. Or you smoke, too. Mm-hmm. Check this out. She actually made an open vent. Now, don't be funny, all right? You, you told me you were going to be funny. Yeah, but what do you think this is for? You a little ventilation. Yeah, when you get fat. That wasn't nice. Oh. You know what? Hold this for me. I got you. Look, I'm going to show you something. Look, boom. Look at that. Opens up. You see this right here? Look. Give me the leg kick again, though. Look, look. Bum, 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 can you bum. do this? I bet you can't do can it. Can I do No, you can't do it. That will slap it. I'm going to show you something because you were funny. One, two, three. You see that? Guess what I'm going to do? You're going to sauce up and look, down? Look how benefit this guayabera is. Watch. Let me see. Oh, watch this. Okay. 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 Okay.
That's Big, big Papa. That's why Big Papa Pimp with the Limp. Now, check this out. You know what is this for, really? To pick up the... Oh, I just took out my machete. Oh. No. Yes. You're this not was... like that. He's cutting. Yes. No, yes. you got it. Okay. Con gana. Con gana. Cha, 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 no, this is actually for your machete, really. Here, let me, let me show you something. This is the most important thing that I want you to remember me as a Guayabella presentator and a fashion consultant because I'm not a salesman. Never call me salesperson. Watch this. What do you think this looks like? Cuban flag. Are you sure? It could be Puerto Rican. They're calling right now to see. Here we go. Look, ladies and gentlemen, we're, we're not making this up. You really are Big Papa. Yeah. Give me a nice guayabera. What's happening here? Give you. Give no, you. Like, show me a nice guayabera. That I I'm going to get. Okay, I know which one. Dame algo. Let me get the one that Jimmy Butler got. I don't want to have the one that's, that's hard linen. This is a soft linen. And look at the shorts. The hilo. I know. They match it. That's why I did it. This is beautiful linen right here. Look at this. Con tabacón, too. Checking the, the price on Big Papa. Carito. It's quality, though. Exactly quality, buddy. Mm -hmm. If you want to look like Big Papa. This isn't cheap. You have to dress like Big Papa. Mm. That's right. All righty. We're going to get you a hat because you need a hat. Okay. You have very little hair. Look at yourself now. Ooh. Come on. Listen, this is dress to impress. I should open up a store next to you, Little Papa. Mm -mm. And Big Papa, no, Little Papa. No, not. Why not? We're not going to let because I run the show here on the block. What if I go across the street, though? Big well, mistake. Big mistake, yeah. Swim with the fishes. Mm-hmm. Huh, or the alligators. I think we should do Little Papa's a Little Havana. It works well, Little Havana, Little Papa. I want you to wear that across the street, and I want to see how many compliments you get. Probably a trillion of them. I have one for Billy right here. Look, Aguita. Yeah, we could get that one, too. If you have any kids, yeah, absolutely. He's run big. Yeah, oh, it, my God. So do I. Oh my God. Imagine this guy at a Havana Nights in this. I shouldn't wear a shirt underneath though, right? Probably. No, you won't. I don't want to stink up your shirts. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for telling me at the last I'm minute. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> All right. Thank you. What kind of hat would he wear with No, he's going like to wear this? something different. He's different. You're a different kind of guy, Billy. That's right. He is. I have a big head. That's the one. Ooh, this one feels nice. That's the one. Now you look Cuban. Yeah. Big Papa, we appreciate you hanging out with us and showing us the art no of problem. la guayabera. But it's a shirt for everybody. Oh, by the way, I have ladies guayabera too. Ooh. Better look at that. We can wear one. Actually, the cameraman could fit in there too. Thank you for watching Tony Tonight. Carito, cut the black.